All right, I'm here with uh, Matt Mays, who's currently on tour, supporting his latest album, Once Upon a Hell of a Time. And uh, Matt Mays is a Juno Award winner, uh, taking home Rock Album of the Year in 2015 for his album Coyote. And prior to crossing the country from west to east, uh, he's taken the time to join us here for a chat, a couple of songs. And I'm truly humbled to be able to spend time with you, Matt. And um, after missing your show at Massey Hall in May by a day, I'm super excited for your show here in (laughs) Portland. Uh, tonight. So um, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Canadian Checkpoint. Thanks, man. It's nice to be here. Cool. Um, Once Upon a Hell of a Time, it's your sixth album, uh, and it comes four years after the Juno Award winning album, uh, Coyote. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time you shared the production with Lowell Campbell from Winter Sleep. And I just wanted to ask you a little bit about that, just apart from your like geographic proximity of both being from Nova Scotia. How'd you wind up um, pairing up with him in the studio? You recorded in Montreal, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, It was just so natural. Um, Lowell and I have been friends since we were like 20. I think he was 18 when I met him, actually. And um, and, uh, yeah, we, you know, we used to share Jam Spot, Winter Sleep in my band back in the day. And, uh, uh, we just uh, have so many uh, memories as just road bands for a long time. So that once we started kind of um, hanging out and playing more together, um, we sort of we spent more time together. And then in, in turn, when we, when we went through Montreal, we would just go and jam at his studio, uh, Winter Sleep Spot, which is also... The Stars Band, that's oh, their, yeah. their oh, rehearsal really? place too, yeah. which used to be Arcade Fire's spot and uh, Wolf uh, Parade spot. So it's, it's a kind of a really historical place in my land in Montreal. Yeah. So we just kind of started messing around there, and it just just became just a, it turned into a thing. We just we started getting really crazed about getting back in at night, and the Stars Band would be in the daytimes, and Lowell and I would go in. Uh, usually at 7 p.m. we would go all night while we had the place to ourselves, and that went on for a whole winter. And uh, yeah, we kind of kicked out the record that way. We just kind of okay. just let it roll, and it, ha- it happened pretty quick. Did you write on the fly, or did you come in with songs? I kind of came in with a lot of half songs um, that they were pretty much. Some of them actually we kind of wrote on the fly. That's what we started doing. Was sort of you know really uh, enjoying just this sort of the the free form of it all. Uh, but then we were like, let's just make this an album. And I was like, well, I got this song, this song. And then we kind of just filled in the holes and, you know, made it into an album album. And, and, uh, that was sort of that. That's great. Did yeah. he play on the album at all? He did. He played a lot on the album. He played all the drums. Oh, he did. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. And, uh, you I know, might say that his drumming on that is a little understated for him. Like it's perfectly done. I think it just suits the album perfectly, yeah. but I wanted to ask because I thought he's such an amazing drummer. Mm-hmm. I think one of the best in Canada for y- sure. Yeah, and yeah. So, um, I'm well. That's good to know. I, I wasn't. Yeah, sure. that's the thing. That's what makes him the most amazing because he knows what to play busy on and right. what to just you know. He can play just a straight beat with no fills and still be the best drummer in Canada. Yeah. He, you know, he's just got so much feel and time, and he does. He's just so yeah. musical, and uh, he's very. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but. Uh, yeah, he's Great. very tasteful, and yeah. you know, and he just he, he the the music comes first, or the song comes first with him in his mind. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, um, I feel that this album, at least from a listener's point of view, is a bit of a cathartic um, trip, uh, and I guess that's just the gift that your writing gives back to you to be able to do that. Um, at least that's how it served for me. It. At what point, like in the journey of making these songs, did you really feel like you'd hit the mark and, and that you were really on to something for a new album? It had been a few years, and uh, I sort of sense that you've worked through a few things through this album. Yeah, totally. Um, it's uh, it's weird to kind of bring something like an album uh, to, to, to be such a, uh, like a connector to you and your life and your feelings and what you're going through because sometimes it's like oh maybe i should just put out a bonehead rock album and just make it a distraction of what i'm really going through uh but this time i kind of just kind of turned the ship into the storm and like uh decided to kind of help my um help myself out with the process and and hanging out every day with my you know one of my bestest friends and somebody i consider a brother like lowell Mm -hmm. who's been through a lot himself on you know being on the road and all that and um, you know, I kind of just decided to to sort of try to get the courage together to do that and sort of crack open my own diary and not have the not have any kind of uh, hesitation on reading it in public, uh, you know, aloud. So, um, yeah, and that that was sort of it wasn't easy, but I think having being in a pl- place that was so relaxed made it kind of doable to kind of 
to get the courage to sort of do that and, and do it with conviction and, yeah. you know. Yeah, doing it with conviction. That's a, a big part of it. Did you feel that sense of release as you sort of got there, getting to the point of releasing the album and then ultimately playing it? Yeah, yeah, totally. But, you know, but now that I'm sort of, I got it out of my system and I have to go and play these songs and every night and scream, oh, I get back into the, the zone. But sometimes before a show, I'm like, man, I got to go there again, you know? Oh, and uh, wow. But I mean, that's what, that's what I think real music is. is I mean, it's, it's a, you know, like I said, it's conviction and it's a, you know, I... Um, I knew what I was getting myself into, you know, so, you know, it's it. these, my songs are like, uh, I hold them very dear, so it's, That's great. it's never a chore. Um, so you're going to play a couple of songs for us while you're here, and uh, one of them being Sentimental Sins, and it's a big favorite of mine, I don't think it's come out as a single yet, but just, I just felt like I really connected to that song, especially that featured line, Surrender to Your Sins, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about that. I mean, my connection for the song is, I was thinking about it last night, that I remember in my in my 30s, everybody telling you that when you get to your 40s, you really stop caring about what people think of you or you right. wind up doing your own thing. And I remember thinking, well, I can just get there early, but nothing really gets you there yeah, early, yeah. right? And and <laughs> yeah. when you're in when you turn 40, it's not like a light switch is on and you go, "Oh, I get it now and I can stop caring." It takes time to work through those things too. And so um I just wondered by like acknowledging those sins, if you will, in this song, if I'm, if I'm on the right track here, um, did you find that it allowed you to sort of appreciate those mistakes, those sins a little bit more? Yeah, totally. I mean, I don't, you know, it's, I think sins could mean a lot of, you know, different things like, uh, um, it's sort of, and I'm glad you brought up the age thing because it's it's sort of like embracing them when you're younger. And I think when I was screaming that line or singing that or writing that line, I was sort of uh, okay with the fact that I, um, you know, I, I took chances on really pushing uh, pushing myself in life and trying everything and and uh, jumping in head first. Um, but now I look back on it and, and uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably say to myself or anybody else to surrender to their sins, you know, in the second half of their life. I think it's time to more, more sort of uh, reflect and I hope that you did take those chances when you were younger because that way I think you can kind of relax a little more and chill out in the second half of your life. So I think towards the end of the song, when I start getting to that point, uh, the sort of the breaking point, it was sort of um, self reassurance and uh, maybe fake or false, you know, reassurance, and that, that it's, it was okay or is okay to still be doing that or or what what have you, you know. Yeah, great, cool. Well, I'd love to hear the song if you're sure. ready to play it. Yeah, cool. Oh, come on, all you lovers. Back to your true love when they cast you out to sea. Cause it's gonna get dark, what's well, gonna get cold? Well, come on, all you lovers, don't say you were never told. The sentimental sins against your fatal flaws. It really don't matter now Cause our love's against the wall So if you're lost and gone There ain't nowhere to be You gotta chase that teenage feeling Back to how it used to be Spending all of your money In hotels and rental cars how am I supposed to get to you if I can't see past the bar? My sentimental sins against your fatal flaws It really don't matter now Cause our love's against the wall This vicious love, this vicious love, this vicious love, this vicious love, 
sentimental sins against your fatal flaw. It really don't matter now, cause our love's against the wall. Surrender to the sins and let everything else fall. Cause baby, it's just you and me against the spirit. She's in love Surrender to the sin 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 All right. Um, Matt, I've heard on this tour that you've intentionally decided to see more of the towns that you're visiting and uh, heard you speak about that before. I just thought I'd ask sort of what brought that on uh, in this coming tour and is there are there any cities that you've been to before that you've kind of like skipped by that you're looking forward to seeing? Yeah, I mean, I've always tried to catch something, but uh, I think uh, lately I've been sort of getting up earlier in the morning and uh, sort of, I've already seen the nightlife of almost every town in the world. <laughs> I've seen the sun come up in a lot of towns. So I, so now I'm sort of, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sort of getting earlier nights and getting up and going, I call them culture walks. I just, whatever town I'm pulling into, if it's a new town, I kind of go online and go kind of check out what I should see or what's to check out or restaurants or coffee shop, you know, it's whatever's cool, even the quirky stuff, hopefully. And, and uh, yeah, it's it's I'm, I I get way more out of touring now. It's sort of like when I get home from tour, I'm just like, wow, I just got to see a lot of really you know cool parts of cool cities and museums and art and you know it's sort of really sort of um, it's a very rich thing to get to uh, feel. You know, it's sort of you sort of expand your culture and and you're within your you know, your life experience. So I, I just, I'm sort of thinking about, you know, my deathbed. It's going to be like, I'm not going to remember some some sort of smoked out shitty bar. I'm going to sort of remember all that cool hot air balloon ride or oh, whatever, right. you yeah. know. Any highlights so far on this tour? Uh, well, we just kind of got started, but um, um, I went on a really great run in a park. Out east, it's very rugged. Um, I'm from Nova Scotia, and it's very rugged and rocky, and it's beautiful. Um, but when I get out west, I really enjoy um, the greenery here and, and how uh, dense and lush and beautiful it is. So I went on a really great run yesterday. and Yeah, it was uh, almost it kind of got lost, which made it kind of exciting. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah, Cool. Um, well, you're obviously here in Portland on the complete other side of the continent. Um, and I know that you like to surf and we've got a couple of not so secret spots here in Oregon for surfing. Right. And I'm just wondering uh, the surfing in your part of the world off the Atlantic o ocean, if you could just tell us a little bit about what makes that special. Well, I mean, it, I started about t over 20 years ago and, uh, it was really quite a secret back then. It's really sort of exploding now because people are finding out how good the waves are and, um, it's just really great. Like I said, it's a really rustic and rugged place, so it makes for a really toothy, jagged sort of coastline, which uh, um, kind of in turn makes it uh, really great for surfing and different options for surfing. And we get a lot of hurricanes there, which bring a, a lot of big swell. So you get a lot of really great, uh, perfect waves, world-class waves. A lot of pros kind of sneak up in the fall. Mm. And, and we surfed all winter, too, um, through snowstorms and things, because we've got a lot of nor'easters, we call them, and they're just storms that come uh, from the northeast. And uh, a lot of really, really great surf. And cool. Yeah, it's a very special scene there. A lot of a lot of close friends are my surfing buddies out east. Is it dry suit type? Uh, wetsuits. Oh, yeah. it is wetsuits. Yeah, yeah I just think wetsuits. They're getting really good right now. They're getting really stretchy now, yeah. so that's, you know, um, that's doable. That's cool. We used to change outside when we were kids, but now all my friends live, uh, they have nice houses on the, and close to the surf spot, so I usually change in their outdoor showers or whatever. Anyways, that's boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> no, I wanted to hear about your surfing anyways. I mean, certainly a lot of people out west wouldn't think of the Atlantic as the place to surf. Yeah. Um, I mean, surfers might know that, but it just comes as a bit of a surprise. We're kind of a little bit 
you know, I suppose we're just lucky here on the West Coast. We wouldn't think to go all the way across the continent to surf, but yeah, it's yeah, something exactly. different out there, isn't it? It's not yeah, like yeah. it's out here, but it's on a different... It's not as consistent as the Pacific, but when it gets good, it's uh, it's better because you can find a place out of the wind or point really reeling long point breaks, which you don't get on the West Coast as much. And, you know, it's really quite uh, quite awesome. Cool. Yeah. Um, so we're going to hear another song in a little bit, and... Um, but I wanted to sort of ask you a little bit about your writing style. And what I like about so, so much about it is that as poetic as it is, it's also very conversational and I sort of wondered if how you connect on that level with say the muse that you're writing about in that style. I just often find that when I'm listening to the lyrics in your songs, I can kind of feel like I'm being as if I'm the person being spoken to and it's very relatable and, um, I don't know if that's just something unique that I've noticed about you or if I've just, just escaped me for some other people, but is that something that you have identified as a skill that you have? I don't know. I, f- I feel like it's like different every song. Sometimes I, I feel like uh, I'm really writing for myself and other times I'm sort of writing just um, like I feel like sort of uh, more of an antenna. Like most of my favorite songs that... Uh, or that I like playing are the ones that I don't feel like I have written, you know, mm. that I feel like they came so quick. And it's very common amongst songwriters I've learned uh, with, with just talking about songs with a lot of songwriters over the years. And it's uh, often the case with them too, where their favorite songs are the ones that sort of were written in the amount of time it took to sort of play them, you know, really quick. And um, But sometimes I like to sit down sort of just as a test, like Nashville style and just write a song and like fight it. And like, even though it's like, doesn't feel right or like you stew over lyrics and just cause it's fun. I, they never end up on the records cause they always sound mm. contrived to me, but uh, th- there's no real, I don't think any method is really sort of, uh, anything black and white has ever sort of shown itself, uh, to me as far as a writing style goes, every song is completely different and I can, uh, you know, as soon as I try to kind of figure out a way to get back to how I was, uh, writing, how I was mentally when I wrote a song or connected or what guitar I was playing or whatever, every time I try to figure it out and go back to it, I can never write a song. It's just sort <laughs> of, you know, you just gotta, the best way to do it is to keep living and, and trusting your gut and sort of, and then they just sort of come to you when you're kind of doing it right or trying to get closer to the source, I guess. Sure. Sure. I like that you'd mentioned that sort of <coughs> fighting that, uh, the contrived urge when you sit down and write those songs and, uh, it's, I, I never feel that when I when I listen to your songs that you've ever forced a lyric or anything like that. So I suppose right. that's just yourself being hypercritical about. That's why what it takes you five years to do records. Too. Right? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. It's worth it though. Would you say? I'd say so. Well, yeah. the thing is, I mean, they're going to be around. Not like it matters when I'm dead, but I mean, I'd rather the fact that they're going to be around forever. I'd rather spend more time getting them right, and I'm still proud of every song on all my records. And it's just I can sleep better at night than For going all sure. oh, like you know. I, I've definitely written a few lyrics in the in the vocal booth. Don't get me wrong, but uh, as a whole, each project I'm really proud of, and I think it's worth putting the time in because really, nothing else really matters. It's like you know, and once it's out, there's yeah. no turning back. No, right? exactly. And yeah. uh, you're kind of owning it forever, um, unless, of course, you get the opportunity to re-record some of your songs, and uh, you're. You've have you recorded, re-recorded the ones off of once a hell. Yeah, upon a twi- hell of a time? twice yeah. upon a hell of a time is yeah. coming out uh, October nineteenth. That's and, great. And uh, yeah, and uh, they're all acoustic versions of the the once upon a hell of a time. Yeah, which was nice to kind of go back and do you know get the songs themselves out. You know, did you start with acoustic versions of your songs? Is that your style, or did they some sort of them? Of, yeah, yeah, some of them. Yeah, and others were super loud guitars with just me and Lowell drunk as skunks in the middle of the night just you know just cranking them out just having fun but it was a bit of both you know yeah uh, it, you know say if Lowell and I did go in and and get a riff and a melody and maybe a chorus or something I would still go back to probably this thing and finish the lyrics sort of and um I kind of play them all through uh on this the whole album to make sure all the songs sort of st- stood uh up on their own because mm. uh, I've you know I've done a few songs that are really rocking, but you can't you can't play them on a piano or or ukulele. And if, I feel like if a song, unless you're ACDC, even their songs hold up on ukulele, right? You know, so it's like I, I kind of put the time in on on uh, on on making sure they hold up on their own. That way, you can play them as a jazz version sure. or a you know punk rock, whatever you want. At that yeah. point, you can kind of relax and go, okay, these songs are supposed to be on this planet. You know? 
Does it feel different to perform them stripped down like that? Uh, I mean, apart from the, you know, I, yeah. physically, I know it's different, but um, yeah, I think only physically. It's uh, I feel I kind of just get into the song itself. It's weird. I picture the same things and have the same feel, the same things, and and as I do when I play them with the full band, it's just physically. It's you know, my ears don't ring the next day, sure. or whatever. But <laughs> yeah. it's it's kind of the same sentiment and the same thing come across. I was kind of curious about that myself, but mm. it's yeah, the same sort of colors right. or whatever, and. Just for my own interest, uh, it will the album be released in the same sequence as Once Upon a Hell? Yeah, Time? yeah, it's um, it's the same exact sequence. Uh, the album cover is going to be just reversed. It's going to be black, uh, black album cover, oh, but great. same cover. It's going to mm-hmm. be like a negative image of Ola's painting. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the album cover. Um, sure. It, until I found out about it, I just thought it was a spectacular album cover that you were. I imagine anybody would be grateful to to get. And then I learned a little bit about uh, the artist, Ola Volo. And I think you're going to play that song for us in a minute. But um, uh, if you could just tell us a little bit about how you met Ola Volo. And um, I know she's a graduate of Emily Carr University of Art and Design. And um, she did the cover of your album. But uh, Mm -hmm. how did that relationship come about? Well, I was DJing a rock night. I was living in Vancouver for a while, uh, a few years ago, and um, I was DJing a, 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 a night at a place called the Heatley um, in, um, in Vancouver, and I walked into the place, and the whole back wall of the whole restaurant was a Olavolo mural. Um, and she's uh, kind of made a real name for herself as a muralist now, too, doing sort of larger scale sort of pieces. Um, but uh, I was just, I fell in love with it. I was, this just really spoke to me. I just, I just, I made me feel all sorts of stuff. And I just, right away, it was like, I, I needed to sort of find out more about who did it. So I asked the, the manager of the place and he's like, oh, it's a local artist named Olavolo. And so I looked her up and, um, and yeah, I saw like her whole, her whole Instagram page, just like all the same sort of stuff. And I was just, you know, just started getting, you know, just going deeper and deeper into each piece and, and uh, yeah, I just, uh, I wrote the song because I kind of just found myself really wanting to be a part of those paintings. I really kind of found myself wishing I could be in one of those crazy, weird, awesome scapes that she creates. And and uh, I kind of just was really intrigued by her because, I mean, you know, like, how does how does this come out of such a, like, you know, a little head, a little brain, you know? That's what I find cool about artists. They're it's, so big, too, eh? those murals. Yeah, things. you know, yeah. and it's, you know, she's such a sweet person, and she's very, very um, uh, just kind and sweet and awesome, And but she's just so vicious in what she does, you know? She's so, like, um, she does so much work so fast and so prolific, and she's just a badass. And... Um, and yeah, so I wrote the song kind of about finding her to sort of it seemed like I could convince her to p- kind of paint me out of because I was in a bit of a rough rough patch and and um, and yeah, it turns out she was a big Winter Sleep fan. So Lowell and Tim from Winter Sleep were like, this is after we'd recorded the song together. They're like, we're with Ola Vola right now. Should we tell her about the song? I was like, no, <laughs> don't tell her. It's super creepy. <laughs> So eventually we kind of had to play the song for her because I, I was like, you know, I don't want to weird you out, but I have a song about you. And, but she's so gracious. She's cool. And we've hung out a few times since and had coffee. And, and uh, we're, we're friends now. Actually, I was texting with her today. She reached out and heard the song on NPR. And, you know, it's, yeah. we kind of connect uh, here and there and keep in touch. But, oh, that's uh, yeah, great. it's kind of a neat relationship. Yeah. And then you just, she obviously agreed to... Um... Yeah, yeah. And, and the, this it, it song is about, you know, f- trying to get... Uh, to get out of here and her one of her paintings so it kind of became full circle you know she uh she um kind of painted me into my own album cover which is kind of neat and uh, the other photos actually and from the album cover i shot in portland here too oh yeah oh wow cool i'd love to hear the song if you're ready to play it yeah sure matt mays and ola volo Above the beast, above the mind. 
monster that we call life Please paint me out of what no one will remember So let me know if you see her Cause I really need to meet her Gotta ask her for a favor To get me out of here Paint 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 me out of here Her name is Olavolo She paints the masterpieces She knows of another dimension Another world where time is suspended I've searched the glass city It led me to a dream when I knew I was getting close to you So let me know if you see her Cause I really need to meet her Gotta ask her for a favor To get me out of here To paint me out of here Paint me out of here Paint me out of here Get me out of here Dear Ola Hide me behind some hidden star Have me run in sync with the animals I don't care Just get me out of here Pick me out of here Pick me out of here Pick me out Ola Volo, Matt Mays off of his album Once Upon a Hell of a Time. Um, thanks for joining us. Thank you, man. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Um, welcome to Portland. Again, super excited that you're here. Yeah, me too. Yeah. First interview here ever. It's awesome. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, that's exciting. Well, good luck tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing the show later on. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to playing, man. Yeah, right on. Right cool. on. Thank thanks. you. Thanks, guys. Great. Awesome. Okay. Well, cool. I gotta go to sound check.